We previously described distributions with regard to skewness and kurtosis. Then we talked about measures of central tendency. Let's next turn our attention to variability. While scores might all tend to center around the same point, they might have different degrees of variability. This has to do with the scatter of the scores in a distribution. Sometimes you'll hear the word spread or dispersion, homogeneity or heterogeneity. For example, with the three graphs, they are all symmetrical, but they have different amounts of dispersion. Take those same three graphs and present them here. You'll notice that the measures of central tendency are the same, but their measures of variability, spread, and dispersion are substantially different. The bottom curve is much more spread out than the top curve. Now, there are measures that we can calculate that actually give us a value to talk about the amount of variability in the data set. The, the top formula on this page is actually the definitional formula of variance. Notice that the mean is subtracted from each score in the distribution, and that amount of deviation is squared, and that's divided by one less than the number of scores. That's the definition of the variance. If you look at it, it looks like an average. Well, essentially it is. The variance is the average squared deviation from the mean. Sorry. If scores are greatly variable, the variance will be larger because scores on average will deviate more from the mean than if they're more homogeneous. Unfortunately, you probably wouldn't use the didactic or teaching formula to estimate or calculate the variance. You'd use the calculating formula, which is the bottom formula. It's much easier to calculate because you don't have to calculate every deviation value to be squared. You only use raw score values. So you have to square each score in the data set, find the sum of that, find the sum of all the scores, and substitute into the formula. To further illustrate that, take a look at this score. This score doesn't deviate very much from the mean. How about this score? It deviates further from the mean. How about this score, it deviates even more. But literally what you're doing with the variance is squaring every deviation from the mean and coming up with a number that represents on average how far does a score deviate from the mean. Distributions that are spread out have larger variances. Once you've calculated the variance, you can then also calculate the standard deviation. Notice the formula on the top is the calculating formula for the variance. If you take the square root of the variance, as we've done on the bottom, you have the standard deviation. Both variance and standard deviation represent how much variability there is in a data set. We'll use the variance and standard deviation many, many times throughout your text. Let's now turn to SPSS and illustrate different variances. Here's our data set again. This time what we're going to do is take a look at pacer laps. We want to see if pacer laps are more variable or less variable depending upon the grade level in which you are enrolled. So first, let's graph these to see what the graphs look like. We'll go to Graphs, Legacy Dialogues, Histogram. We'll put Pacer as the variable. We'll put Student Grade as the rows or different distributions, which you'll see in just a second. So then we'll say OK. And notice now we have three graphs. The top one is for the 6th graders, 7th graders, and 8th graders. Notice they're all positively skewed. Generally, there are some children who mature a little faster than others, so they have higher achievement on the PACER score. But notice they all have PACER scores that are positively skewed, but different amounts of variability. I wonder which has the greater variability. Can you determine by looking at the graphs? Well, let's actually find out what the variance and the standard deviations are. So we'll go back to analyze, compare means, means, we'll put pacer lapse as the dependent variable. We'll look at that by student grades. For options, we'll click on the mean, the number of cases, the variance, and the standard deviation. Continue. And here we have the mean, variance, and standard deviations by grade level. And as you can see, look at standard deviations, 12.9, 16.6, 18.5. As children aged, the standard deviations got larger. 
if you square the standard deviation, you'll get the variance. So you'll notice the variance is smallest for grade 6 and largest for grade 8. Simply indicates how much variability there is in pacer laps, in this case, dependent upon what your grade level is.